Hey guys, so I haven't filmed in like three days-ish because literally nothing's been happening and now there are a few stories that I can actually string together to make a cohesive video. Uh, but other than that, today is the 13th of April, just in case anyone needed to know that. And tomorrow, well, as I'm filming this tomorrow, the 14th of April, which might be the day you're watching this, is my birthday, which I'm celebrating in the lockdown. Great, incredible, I love that. Of course, um, you know, usually I, I don't really have any elaborate parties or anything. I'm not that kind of a person. It just kind of, I don't know, makes me feel weird. But I do like to um, go to a nice restaurant or, you know, leave the house. Uh, but now that's not a possibility. So that's really cool. Happy birthday to me. Instagram, Twitter, follow me on there. It's a fun time. But also second channel description. There's a video on there already if you guys want to watch that one and more definitely coming soon. But my brain's just not been functioning very well right now with the stress of everything happening. So I'm hoping that I can get back into the swing of things and film a few videos for my second channel. Um, and I'll probably take my mind off those things. So yeah. The first story we have is to do with Charlie D'Amelio's sister, Dixie, who um they're both basically tiktok stars like they do those dance challenges on tiktok that i'm very jealous of because i want to be that i want to have you know 40 million followers and be invited to fashion week and i just can't dance okay just can't dance and that's my struggle in life just as a whole you know um so dixie used one of those sounds for those tiktok dances that's like i like boys and girls and something else and she had to address the fact that she's not bisexual because people kept on leaving comments insinuating that that sound and her using that sound makes her bisexual first of all none of your business how about that how about if someone doesn't come out as something it is not your position or place to ask them if they are that thing you know and second of all the fact that she had to address it so that people would stop leaving comments mind your own business she clearly seemed irritated in that clip yeah i just think it's so stupid i hate when people are like oh are you this are you dating this person are you doing this it's like but if someone didn't mention it there must be a reason for it there must be a reason why someone didn't mention this one specific thing and the fact that they didn't mention it means shut up. So Gabby Hanna recently tweeted out saying something along the lines of basically like imagine being negative on the- I don't, I don't even want to read it out. Basically just saying that if you're negative on the internet that somehow makes you less successful and you won't reach the kind of success that positive people reach. And that is so reminiscent of the good old tweet by Lily back when everyone started basically talking about her. I think it was either when people were talking about her late night show when they were talking about her being a hypocrite when she spoke about Forbes. Uh, where she was like oh imagine making negative videos on YouTube. Basically just saying that like, you can't be successful and negative. I'm tired of that because I mean first of all the most successful people on every single platform are the meanest most narcissistic people and that is a fact. Just look at like YouTube, TV, look at CEOs of companies like you can't be a nice human being and get to that point because those people got to that point by being literal sociopaths. Um, So let's stop on that uh, because it gives people a false narrative that being a kind person is what gets you to be a multi-millionaire and half the time it doesn't. It actually stops you from getting there because you're trying to help everyone so much that you're going to get scammed by those sociopaths that are going to get to the top which is a really sad reality but that doesn't make it any less of a reality if that makes sense like just because something's bad doesn't make it not real and it just gives me the same vibes like oh people that criticize me are negative and you are never going to be as successful as me have you heard that i have a book but talking about lily singh i recently uh saw on her late night with lady singh channel like a 37 second announcement that basically said that from this point on the videos are pre-filmed and they are obviously pre the crisis in the world happening right now so she says you know like if you think it's weird that we're not addressing it that's because everything's been pre-filmed before the crisis now hear me out this whole thing started kind of going around end of january like mid-February people were like oh this is weird like things are happening um so you're telling me that all these episodes are filmed at least in January if not sooner than that I think that is exactly the reason why her late night show is going the way it is because any criticism she gets she can't change it because the episodes are already pre-filmed but I'm assuming that's also why she gets kind of irritated by the criticism because she can't change it. So she knows that once someone criticizes her for like this one joke that she made and she already knows that she made that joke in 10 other episodes, she's gonna be pissed off because she's just gonna keep on getting that same criticism again and again. But not because she's filming that same joke again and again, but because she pre-filmed all of them at the same time. I kind of understand why it's kind of annoying for her now to be in this situation where she receives a bit of hate or criticism or whatever it is about a certain thing and she already knows that she's gonna keep on receiving it because she just did not stop making that joke. For example, if you look at other late night hosts, for example, Jimmy Fallon, right? He one, speaks about the crisis happening right now, but two, he does very like current event things. So for example, he got 
Charlie D'Amelio to go on his show because she's got 50, almost 50 million followers on TikTok and lots on Instagram. She's gonna have a reality show now. Like her and her family is just come out that they're gonna be doing a reality show. Incredible. I don't know if I'm gonna watch it because I'm not that interested, but I just think it's really cool that, you know, someone that's coming from TikTok is getting some recognition. So he had her on because he's obviously realizing the power of TikTok right now. And this power could be gone by literally next year. So the fact that Lily is pre-filming all of the episodes means that she can't get those like current people People on and get a boost of views because her views are awful on her videos if you go on her channel like you know and usually um late night shows will post clips of their show so for example like jimmy fallon will post ones like just everyone does and they get hundreds of thousands of views on most of the videos because they'll have current people on like charlie d'amelio like you know it's, it's a it's a current name that's going to bring in a new audience for them uh because i'm assuming the girls that are into charlie d'amelio aren't exactly into late night shows so it's going to bring a whole new audience in for that video but lily can't do that because she's pre-filming these videos like three months ahead of time three four five months ahead of time so in reality even when there is someone that would like blow up right now like a brand new singer she wouldn't be able to have them on her show because she already pre-filmed episodes ahead of time so every other late night host is like we need to get the singer on right now or this tiktok star or this youtuber or someone that's like getting a lot of traction right now lily is just going to be left in the dust she's not going to get those views from that person because she's already pre-filmed all the episodes which is why her views on her late night show are so awful and i mean not her actual show i mean her youtube clips because um i think late night shows and for example ellen and stuff like all those talk shows get a lot of traction on the internet because um when you post those clips on youtube you can put a nice like clickbaity title on it um, um, people are interested. It's a three minute clip. It's not a waste of time. You're gonna click on it. You're gonna watch a three minute clip and you're gonna move on. It usually gets recommended to you as well or suggested based on other things that you watched. And then once you watch a few of those clips, you get nothing but recommendations for that talk show. But Lily just can't seem to do that because a lot of her topics just sound very boring. Um, there's no like title there that's like, oh, I need to click on this right now. Uh, whereas I have that with a lot of other shows where they'll be like, for example, um, sometimes I get recommended The Real because the titles are very almost clickbaity, but not quite. Like they still talk about the topic that is in the title, but it's a very like attention grabbing title about a topic that they just talk about for a few minutes. With Jimmy Fallon, he gets on a lot of like very current people. And then there's Lily where she's stuck in this like, she's not getting anyone interesting on right now. No offense, but as in like, I don't, I'm not really interested in the people that she's getting on. They're not very like current people. Uh, there might be a few celebrities that are like, you know, a little good but other than that she's not really like fitting into that like current events thing even though in the description of her videos it says that she talks about current events which like how can you realistically talk about current events when you pre-film your episodes five months ahead of time so yeah i think they've really screwed her over by making her pre-film episodes because if you made a joke and you had tons and tons of tweets reviews youtube comments telling you this joke is not funny even if you genuinely thought it's funny just for the sake of your tv show you wouldn't make that joke again because because it's almost like the customer's always right thing. Like you, you just want to appeal to the audience that's saying we don't really like this joke. So you're gonna be like, okay, I won't say that joke anymore. Even though I believe it's funny, I'm not gonna say it anymore because I don't wanna, you know, I want people to enjoy my show because if people enjoy my show, they're gonna watch it. They watch it, I make more money because I get renewed for more seasons. So in reality, it's just good for your career to sometimes listen to the hate comments and be like, okay, fair enough, I won't make that joke anymore. But because she pre-filmed all these videos and no one at any point told her this joke is not funny, she kept on making it and now i'm just wondering if because of that that will be the demise of her late night show if she'll get renewed because realistically she received reviews reviews came in the reviews went good but she wasn't able to fix it so the whole show is now bad no one's watching it the views are awful is she gonna get renewed for a season two i don't think so uh, i personally think that it was a poor choice on their part to be like oh we're gonna pre-film everything uh because obviously criticism and stuff reviews you're gonna need to it's why pilots come out like when a new tv show comes out they always release a pilot which is to see what the critics say to see the reviews to see the hate or the criticism or whoever what they like and then they make adjustments accordingly to those reviews and those criticisms that people make hence why there are sometimes cast changes because maybe someone's like i liked the pilot but i didn't like this specific actor or this actress and if they're not like a crucial character they will just make a slight swap with pre-filming 20 episodes if there is a criticism about episode too but you keep on making that same thing for the next 18 episodes you're gonna get screwed and i think it, it was a fault on their part but lily is gonna be the one that has to deal with the consequences aka i don't think her show is gonna be renewed so the next piece of tea is uh jeffree star so back in the day when kylie released her concealers uh jeffree star tweet out, tweeted out saying with all the money you have for you to be using the same packaging as my lipsticks and then i remember she released her birthday collection her last birthday collection which was the money one and she 
had like a body highlighter uh, in like a circle pan, which is like the most basic shape for highlighters. And I think one of his fans was like, oh, this is a direct copy of Jeffree Star's highlights, even though the, the like imprint in the highlight is different. Uh, Jeffree Star's ones don't have like their plastic on top, like clear plastic, her one wasn't. Um, her one had a money sign on it, his one didn't. I mean, they were very different. In, this, in the grand scheme of cosmetics, those tiny changes make it a whole drastically different product. Because at this point in time, there is nothing you can make in the industry that will be original. And I will say this now, lipstick tubes look identical. Uh, one of them will be squarish, some of them will be circlish, some will be rounded on top, some will be squared off on top. Like, but at the end of the day, they're all lipstick bullets. They twist up, you get a nude, you slap on your face and that's it. Eyeshadow palettes, you either have circle pans or you have square pans. It's either a rectangle or, or a square palette. They all look the same. Um, lip glosses, you either have a brush or a doe foot applicator. They're either long or short or thick, whatever it is, but they all look the same. So the fact that people are still doing this whole like, oh, they copied this person. Then he had a go at Huda Beauty for copying Colourpop's palettes um, because they both use pastel shades, even though spring is coming. Like the least original idea is pastel for spring. Uh, but anyway, the fact that I'm saying all of this is because now it's come out that basically Jeffree Star copied Lorac with his Bloodlust collection. Hear me out. When Shane Dawson's series on Jeffree Star and the conspiracy palette came out, in one of the episodes, I think it was the ugly truth of the beauty industry, at minute 22 approximately, Shane Dawson is looking through different palettes to think of shapes and sizes for his own palette, which makes sense in the industry, which is why I say that there is no original ideas anymore. And the fact that, you know, he's looking through palettes doesn't mean he's copying another brand because all palettes look the same. He's just like, which one looks more convenient for me? So he's just getting some inspiration from a uh, PR that he's been recently sent or any makeup that he's bought. So he brings out the Lorac collection, which wasn't a palette though. It was um, it was like a box um, and he opened it up and there was like eyeshadows in there and lip glosses and stuff. Uh, but still it was the royal, it was, it was collection was based around like royal and queeny stuff, right? Like there was queen on stuff and then it said royal on other stuff. It was a hexagon. And when you opened it up, obviously there was more stuff in there. It looks oddly similar to the Jeffree Star palette. And the fact that it came out way before the Jeffree Star Bloodlust collection came out is incredible to me. It all looks very similar. And normally I would say this is not a big deal. Like realistically, we've seen these shapes before. We've seen hexagons, um, Fenty uses octagons, but it's a very, very similar vibe. And then, you know, like I said, most palettes look the same. Square pan, circle pan, rectangle, square. It all looks the same at the end of the day. There is nothing right now that you could create that would be like mind-blowingly different. But because it's Jeffree Star and he consistently and continuously accuses different brands of copying him. Here we are, you copied Lorac. And hear me, like, even with the Kylie um, concealer packaging, if you didn't want someone to copy your packaging, maybe create custom packaging instead of using third-party, like, packaging, you know? So for example, recently we spoke about Manny Emue. Uh, Manny Emue designed his own highlighter compact, designed it and copyrighted it. It is his custom packaging that he spent thousands on that no one else can use now because if they do, they will get sued. And recently Makeup Revolution used that exact palette because a third party sold it to them and they had to withdraw the products, recall them, take them out of circulation because it was a copy of a custom concept. And see that? So if Jeffrey had created a custom concept for his lipstick packaging, no one would be able to copy it. So if you don't want Kylie to use your packaging for her concealers, then how about you just create custom packaging? So clearly you must have copied it from someone else as well. This isn't like an original idea. So this whole thing is just very interesting to me uh, that there is this ongoing like, oh, you're copying them and you're copying them when like you just copied Lorac and you're not gonna speak on it because like his fans are really going strong on this one. They're like, no, it's different. It's not a palette. Like yeah, but the concept is the same. And, and the thing is, how can you compare concealers to lipsticks? You can't. So why is he doing it? Because he's petty. He is a 34 year old man coming for a 22 year old woman for using the same packaging for her concealers as he used for his lipsticks when neither of them owns the rights to that packaging. Miss me with it. Miss me with this bullshit. So this is very interesting. I know I'm gonna, this video is gonna have a worse like to dislike ratio because Jeffree Star fans always come in clutch. Um, hi guys, once you've disliked, you can really just, the next piece of tea is Trisha Paytas. Trisha Paytas has recently posted on her Instagram story basically saying that she knows that no matter what she does now, she'll always be deemed as the troll of the internet because of her troll past. Troll past, she used that exact phrase. Hear me out, the, the troll phase is not in your past, you're still doing it. Every time you come out with a new statement about you identifying as another thing, 
you're perpetuating that troll past of yours. You literally just now pretended that you're gonna be going Jewish. You're dating Healer's brother because you were supposed to be on their bachelor show and you just wanna screw them over. Unless they're involved in it, which I did mention in one of my videos, it seems like their Trisha Paytas videos get a lot more views than their non-Trisha Paytas videos. So there is a slight, like, they could be doing this for views. The whole, you know, you having DID thing. The troll thing is not in your past. It is still in action. So yeah, I I, ugh, I just can't with Trisha Paytas. I feel like at this point, even if there was something going on with her and she filmed a video about it, no one would really believe her, which is really sad and, it, and unfortunate, but that's just how things go when you're a troll on the internet and you pretend to do things that aren't real, that, that aren't true. So recently with the whole crisis thing in the world, uh, Logan Paul has been selling face masks, as you do, and apparently they were supposed to be free, that's what he said, they were going to be free, yet he's charging a $22 shipping fee on them. Just when you were turning your career back around, just when you were doing a thing, just when we thought, you know, oh, Logan Paul's rebuilding his career, he's the good brother, he's not the problematic one, you go sell $22 face masks and you hide that fee in the shipping fee, uh, which you think makes it free. This is like the, the Gabby Hanna thing all over again, which was selling those damn brushes and she was like these are free yet the shipping was like $15 so you're paying $15 for the brushes they weren't free like in reality they were $15 brushes and they were pretending to be $80 brushes which they weren't this is the exact same thing except he's not pretending that it's a higher value he's pretending that they're free when they're not the next piece of tea is Olivia Jade uh, if you don't know the situation because it's been happening for like over a year now I think her parents Laurie Lachlan and I always forget his name but his surname is Janouli they paid 500k for Olivia Jade and her sister to go to USC which is one of the most prestigious universities in America. It's very difficult to get into. And she pretended, they basically pretended that she was on the rowing team, which she claimed that she didn't know that they were doing that. As in Olivia Jade claimed that she didn't know her parents were doing that, but we'll get into it. Uh, the thing is, she had a very successful, she still does technically, a successful YouTube channel. She had a collaboration with Sephora and was a poly or pretty little thing, one of them. She was making a lot of money from AdSense. She was friends with David Dobrik and the vlog squad. So that's always good for the views. And just in general, she seemed seemed very content with her career because it is a career. YouTube is a career. She's making a lot of money and this could have been a really good thing for her. And then her parents went and it up. Now hear me out. I know that people love to put blame on Olivia Jade, but when you have a really good relationship with your parents, when they say something, you're gonna believe them and you're gonna do as they say. And it seems like her parents had a very big say in whether she went to uni or not. I mean, college. Cause I'm pretty sure she was content with not going to uni. She said herself on multiple occasions, she is not into studies. She's not into education. She just wanted to have a YouTube channel, but her parents made her go to uni. When all of this came out, well, be right before all of this came out and she said she was going to USC. In a lot of interviews, she was like, oh, you know, like I didn't really wanna go, but my parents were like pushing me to go to uni and I didn't really want to. So you can probably tell that her grades weren't great. Um, she didn't really want to go uni, but her parents were like, just go. Uh, we just want you to go to uni. So I don't know why they did that. That's the thing. It's I think it's the older generation still not seeing the internet as a valid career and thinking that having a degree somehow makes you a better or more educated human being when you can be just as intelligent, if not more, than someone that has a degree. Like I've learned so much more from just researching things on the internet or researching things that actually interest me in my own time rather than when people are like, you have to learn this. Because um, I usually just forget all that stuff. So I think there is a big like generational thing there and recently pictures of her pretending to be rowing came out which means that she did know about all of this but I still have a little bit of like a she seems to have a really good relationship with her parents uh, and like she takes a lot of pictures with her mom and stuff so I think maybe just maybe it was like a oh just go to uni just do it just do it for us do it for me like you know the whole like slight guilt tripping slight manipulation like just do it for me please I would really like you to go to uni and she was like okay fine mom I'll go I don't know I wasn't there but it just generally doesn't seem like she would have went uni if it wasn't for her parents bribing her into a uni or forcing her to go to uni because she just didn't want to go she made that very clear on multiple occasions and multiple interviews she was like I don't want to go to uni uh but my parents are forcing me so I think if it wasn't for them saying it she wouldn't have gone. It would be very different if she was like, oh, I really want to go to uni. I just don't have the grades for it. And then her parents bribed her way into a uni. Cause then you'd be like, oh, this is your idea. Like you wanted to go to uni. You knew you didn't have the grades. You didn't put in the effort and they just got you in there. But she claimed, she on multiple occasions said, I don't want to go to uni, which means this wasn't her idea. Why would she be wasting three years of her life at a university when she can be flying to, you know, Bora Bora with Tarte or whatever companies are doing brand trips now. So yeah, in general, I think she's to blame, right? Like, you know, you could have, you're a 20 year old woman 
women you can say no mum i'm not going uh you're making good money on youtube you don't really need their money that much but i think for the sake of like peace in the family and peace in the household pretty sure she was like okay fine i'll go you happy now um which just kind of sucks because now they've ruined their careers and her career and her parents might be going to jail for 40 years this isn't a good situation for anyone like i think as much as we can be angry at her for doing this and angry at her parents for doing this losing your parents for 40 years because they sent you to uni it's a little much just just my opinion i think there should be consequences they should have to maybe like cover x amount of people's like scholarships to go to uni definitely kick her out of usc if she hasn't been kicked out already fines community service but i think to go to jail for a non-violent crime it's never something that i'm into whether whatever the situation is i'm just not a big fan of like really long sentences for non-violent crimes because i think if you're not a violent human being why are you being moved away from society but that is a whole other conversation and that is just a lot of what we did like in law as well it's just like is prison the best option for non-violent criminals let me know that's the tea for today if you enjoyed the video give a thumbs up comment down below anything comment down below and subscribe because i post videos every time something happens it's about three times a week so hit that bell and you'll be notified when that's happening social media links in description as well as my second channel and anything else you might need uh so if you enjoyed yeah so what bye guys